Welcome to Beyond Sport with Fiona Stewart. If you've been listening for a while, welcome back. If you're new to the show, I'm your host, Fiona. My passion for sport really started when I was a competitive swimmer. This led me to study sport development at university whilst also working within the sporting industry. I'm a huge believer in sport being used as a tool for good. Each week, I'll bring you an episode with someone involved in the sporting world. It could be your local high school teacher or your childhood or current sporting hero. The difference is that it's not your typical type of questions. We talk about the highs and lows in their journey through sport, but also what they've learned from it and how it's made them who they are today. There's also a strong focus on how being involved in sport can impact the community. If you haven't already, make sure you hit follow wherever you're listening so you don't miss the drop of each new episode. If you're after some bonus content, then you can check out our Instagram or Facebook page at Beyond Sport with Fiona Stewart. Introducing this week's guest, Alana Baldy. Coming from rural Victoria, Alana has been involved in the sporting world since she was a kid through athletics and cricket. Not only has Alana been actively involved in sport, but she is a huge advocate for sport being used as a tool for social inclusion, particularly for underrepresented communities. With an extensive sporting volunteer and coaching resume, Alana spends her time and effort helping others achieve their dreams in sport. This chat will be split into two parts with part two being released next week. If you haven't already, make sure you hit follow wherever you are listening so it comes straight into your library. That's enough for me. Let's hear from Alana. Can you tell us about your sport and how you got into it? Uh, So I have two sports. Uh, So athletics. I started when I was five years old at Little Athletics in Nathalia and I progressed all the way through to under 16s which was the first year that uh, Little Athletics Victoria, they actually called it Interacts Mm -hmm. back then. And when I was 15, I progressed to my first senior club, which was South Bendigo Athletics Club in Bendigo, uh, which was a two-hour drive from my house at Katunga back then because there was no senior club in Shepparton. But now, thankfully, um, Shepparton Athletics Club is three years old now so yeah I've been involved with Shepparton Athletics since they restarted the new club they've had a couple of senior clubs on and off over the years but yeah unfortunately they haven't been sustainable but yeah the club's in a really good position now Um, and with uh, cricket well I was pretty much born into cricket Um, my parents were heavily involved at Newmarket Cricket Club and I'm like a third or fourth generation of my family to be involved at the club yeah both my sports not just as like a participant but um, also as a volunteer and official and a coach as well. You said that like you were born into cricket was it just that your family was like around the cricket club and then you were just like oh I kind of want to play like how did how did that happen? Um, No it was more so like before like I can remember being like so young um, maybe six or seven years old Uh, my father at the time like he was president of the cricket club and my mum was involved as like the treasurer or bar manager Um, my father used to also prepare the wickets Mm -hmm. at Newmerca for a very long time and so with both my parents involved like Saturday nights I remember curling up as a young kid underneath the table um, (laughs) to go to sleep (laughs) And I guess like at that age, I didn't really, you know, know much because there wasn't like Milo Blast and that type of thing. So there wasn't really a big avenue for me to be involved in. But then, yeah, as I got older, like obviously junior cricket and it progressed to like, um, you know, years on as an administrator, um, you know, scoring, coaching. I have done my Uh, umpires accreditation for cricket but yeah that's just something I don't pursue because of my uh, coaching and other volunteer involvements so yeah I think it was just a progressional thing oh that's so cool and like I've spoken to a few people but no one quite I guess is rural (laughs) as as you what was it like like having sport in terms of like a country town like I'm lucky I'm in metro Melbourne, I get metro, Mornington Peninsula, so kind of metro. But like, was it really like the hub for the town? Absolutely. So like I grew up in Katunga, which is about 40 minutes north of Shepparton. And, you know, back then the population in the town was 
like in the actual township itself was about 45 to 50 people um everybody knew everyone you were involved in the club because that was like your entertainment and Mm. especially you know being underage the town eventually like got a pub uh, but again like you know you had to be overage to go there and even like living in Shepparton now which is obviously quite a lot bigger there's so many sporting clubs here which are the center Mm -hmm. of the township you know we're like two and a half hours from Melbourne and it's again a small country town where you know a lot of people but yes sporting clubs are the real I think the lifeblood of the towns and especially with everything that the communities have gone through in the last couple of years sporting clubs are an amazing example of like communities coming together to support each other whether it's through like bushfires we've had around here flooding you know or COVID um, all the sports clubs get involved any way they can to help each other out. Yeah, and you mentioned before that you were, you know, you do a lot of volunteer work. Was there something that made you want to volunteer rather than play or coach or, yeah, what what got you into the volunteering? Uh, I think just growing up, again, I didn't really know any different. So even not just as, yeah, volunteering in sport, um, I remember some of my first memories of volunteering were at my local agricultural show society in Yamaka. My parents always told me that, you know, sport couldn't happen if it wasn't for the volunteers. And that's something that I learned over the time that, you know, whether it's a coach, whether it's a scorer, an umpire, a track official, Mm -hmm. you can't go out there and play your sport if it's not for those people. And I think, yeah, volunteering in regional communities is even more important because you have smaller community bases and smaller club bases as well so you just get in and do what needs to be done to yeah make your sports work Mm, I think that's so important and I've done a little bit of volunteering myself but yeah like you said like it's the parents who just jump in to be the timekeepers or even yeah like the parents who are like oh I'm around the pool anyway so I may as well be an official (laughs) or I'm around the track anyway yeah and so yeah you see the adults doing that and I think it's just like a natural progression that yeah, say if you're waiting to like throw, you might go mm-hmm. and fetch discuses or you might help with the measuring tape or something. And it's just one of those things that you can really get a passion for. And yeah, so many opportunities come out of volunteering. We're going to touch on them in a minute, but I do want to know, like, was there a specific moment that you were like, oh, like athletics is my passion and cricket's my passion or did it just kind of naturally evolve? Oh, yeah, I was really thinking about this um, question when you sent them over the weekend. And I can't sort of pinpoint a specific point in time where, yeah, you know, the, they're really my passion. I obviously really enjoyed both sports and I played a little bit of women's AFL as well. But I think it's as I've become older, just seeing the difference that I can make as a volunteer in both the sports that I become really passionate about both of them and Mm -hmm. that sort of led to my passion in advocacy for um, especially people with disabilities within the sport so yeah I think it's just something that evolved over time Mm, yeah and I think that's really important too because there's some people they're like oh this was the moment you know it was career defining this is what when I knew I wanted what I wanted to do but then there's also that natural progression as well that's like well no like I've, I've seen it I've been part of it and now I've witnessed the difference it can make and I want to be part of that difference and yeah I think it's an important thing to discuss that it's like there can be a moment but it also can just evolve over time yeah there's like things definitely that I've achieved that I'm really proud of like in my own individual athletics and I think one that really sticks in my mind is the 2005 Arafura Games it was my first like international competition and I was going in you know as a 17 year old like so naive not really knowing you know I never competed at an international meet and it was a development games with about 30 different countries from all around like the Arafura Sea type of area. So whilst that was, you know, really significant and I loved athletics because of uh, winning a gold and two bronze, I wouldn't say, you know, I completely fell in love with the sport then and I was super passionate about it. I've just, I've always loved the sports, but I honestly, I think it's, Um, moments that I've had with volunteering and things that have happened because of my volunteering that I've become more passionate Special Olympics Australia winter games Mm -hmm. Um, so I went as an off snow carer for the Victorian team and those athletes were vying for their opportunity to represent Australia at the world 
Special Olympics Winter Games. And to know you're going up there to care for athletes and give them an opportunity to represent Australia, I think that's sort of when I fall in love with sport is seeing the difference you can make to people and providing them with those opportunities that, yeah, without volunteers, you know, those selection trials wouldn't go ahead. And same with the National Cricket Inclusion Carnival that Cricket Australia runs. I was lucky enough to be involved in the first two carnivals, one uh, working for Cricket Australia and the second one as an assistant coach of the Victorian Vikings, which is for intellectually disabled athletes. And knowing that the coaches and team manager, if we didn't go along, those cricketers wouldn't have been able to play. Mm -hmm. Um, So, yeah, I think that's when you really fall in love with the sport, seeing that you're helping other people achieve their dreams. Yeah, definitely. And you've just mentioned two other, like two examples, but was there like any personal stories where you've seen someone achieve their dreams because (laughs) because of what you've done? Uh, I guess on a completely different level, one volunteering opportunity that is still really significant to me and I think will always yeah remain as a really special memory was I was a hurdles crew assistant at the 2006 Commonwealth Games in Melbourne on the MCG and I really idolized Yana Pittman um, at the time and I got to see her win gold in the women's 400 meter hurdles and then also I was a volunteer on the marathon the day Karen McCann won gold Um, and I was actually standing at the 200 metre mark of the marathon inside the stadium and my job was to yell out 200 to go, 200 to go and you know you never think that you'd be this young girl (laughs) from a small country town yelling out to let elite athletes know they've got 200 (laughs) metres to go in a marathon which you know I'm sure they were well aware of but to see And to hear the crowd, you know, a packed MCG stadium roaring and cheering for Karen McCann. And, you know, unfortunately she's passed away now, but to have been involved in like a significant moment like that, I think is really special as a volunteer. Mm -hmm. It gave me goosebumps when you were saying that. (laughs) You were like 200 to go and I got goosebumps and the hairs of my arms stood up. I could have only imagined like what that would have felt like. And, you know, and like you said, as a young female, being part of such a significant moment. And at the time, you know, I never understood the significance of that moment there and then um, and Karen McCann winning the gold medal. But now I look back and it's often you see it come up in clips on Instagram or on YouTube and I can see me standing there at that 200 metre mark and, you know, in my Commonwealth Games a volunteer uniform, which I still have to this day, and now looking back and seeing the significance of not only like what she achieved, but... the the significance in I guess female marathon running and yeah as I said like volunteering just gives you some amazing opportunities that at the time you don't understand the significance of but I look back now you know more than 10 years later and the Commonwealth Games volunteering there will always be one of yeah the most special memories I'll have of, of being involved in sport. Yes and speaking of Commonwealth Games you were actually a a, it's a torch holder, isn't it? <laughs> a torch bearer? Uh, yeah, torch bearer. Yeah. <laughs> a torch bearer for the 2018 Com Games. So you actually got to... For the Commonwealth Games, it's called the Queen's Relay Button. Yes. So you actually got to hold it and walk down Main Street of Shepparton. Yeah, I was very lucky to be about one of 20, I think, roughly, volunteers from around the Greater Shepparton City Council area that was selected to be a baton bearer Um, and my leg of the baton just happened to go down the main street of Shepparton. Um, It was absolutely amazing and that was a bit of a goosebump, you know, moment Mm. for me to have friends and family there um, to, um, yeah, have been selected because of my volunteer work and have the opportunity to run with the torch. It was, yeah, a really amazing experience. Oh, I could imagine like, and, you know, being, I guess it's 12 years after your first Commonwealth Games volunteer experience, like, was it kind of like a pinch me moment? Like, I didn't know when I was standing, um, the, the work with the hurdles with Yana Pittman that I'd end up like running down Main Street Shepparton. <laughs> oh, no, and even, you know, now I look back at it then when I, and I knew the Commonwealth Games obviously were a very significant thing, but you don't understand the magnitude of it 
at such a young age, you know, when you're involved. Um, again, you're just this naive young girl from the country. You know, going to Melbourne was such a big thing, you know, getting on the train and three-hour train trip down to Melbourne. And, yeah, no, there's no way I would ever have thought that I would be selected to carry the Queen's baton in the Commonwealth Games. And, obviously, like, I absolutely loved watching the Commonwealth Games on the TV and seeing so many athletes from Australia doing so well. So, to have been a part of that, it's really special and something that I'll be forever grateful for. Mm, and it's just a credit to your hard work as a volunteer and doing all that work. Like I was reading some of your achievements and like you've been a Sport and Rec Victoria Community Coach of the Year finalist. There's a cricket coaching, there's Melbourne Renegades assistance coach. Like there's so many like things in that resume. I'm like, oh my gosh, like look at you go. <laughs> Yeah, like I don't, I'm not someone who brags about what I've achieved. You know, I'm very modest about it. But I think, yeah, obviously being injured at the moment, significantly injured and having to have such a huge time away from sport. And I don't think it matters, um, you know, what level of sport you participate in, whether it's, you know, elite anywhere in between or grassroots level, missing out on sport for a significant period of time really affects your life. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, especially having ruptured my ACL, it doesn't just affect my sport. Um, you know, day-to-day -day tasks become really difficult, uh, even driving, like I'm really limited in what I can do with driving. So it's really, I guess, been a good time to sit back and reflect on what I have been involved in and what I have achieved. Yeah, being assistant coach for the Melbourne Renegades All Abilities team was something really special um, to see, you know, two professional sporting clubs in the Stars and Renegades have all abilities teams and those players and the coaches, you know, we got kitted out in Renegades kits and they played against the Stars all abilities team. Things like that are really significant, I guess. And, you know, again, starting out as just a, a young girl from the country, that's something that I would never have imagined um, when I first started out cricket coaching in particular because those programs just didn't exist mm -hmm. did you find it as because I guess like cricket is a male dominated sport and I'm assuming that the coaching would be male dominated as well did you find it kind of uncomfortable being a coach in cricket or like was it just that's what you wanted to do so you did it I found it uncomfortable in some ways. I guess the males didn't like having a female who knew just as much as them or was as passionate or as good as what they were with the sport. Mm -hmm. And I'm someone who's very determined. Um, and I think that shows, you know, now with my advocacy, um, especially with disability sport, that if I want to do something, I'm not going to let someone's opinion or anyone stand in the way of what I want to achieve. And things I have achieved with my volunteering I wouldn't have achieved if I let people intimidate me there is difficult moments um being involved in a very male dominated industry but you know as we see now with the women's ashes being on tv we see how inclusive cricket is becoming um so yeah it's definitely not a male dominated industry anymore and there's a lot of female coaches getting around from yeah the elite level right down to grassroots which I think is amazing Mm. And we'll we'll touch on the social change that sport can make uh, a little bit later. But I just wanted to ask that question because I I came from a swimming background, which is very, I think it's even participation wise, there's 53% females and then whatever the 47 males. But in terms of coaching, it was kind of like, oh, it's maybe only 4% female coaches or like the stats were really, really low back in when I started and so I was kind of like oh like this was a very evenly based male female participation rate but then stepping up as a coach it was like oh where are the other females around here so that's why I wanted to ask that question like what did you feel when you were doing it yeah even um so I'm just look back in 2015-16 season I was awarded the very first cricket Victoria female coach of the year and I think that was significant for me being from a small country town that I could show other females around this area and sort of be a leader and say hey look you know I knew nothing like about this award but look what you can achieve you know you, um, you can be awarded the best coach in Victoria hmm. being a female and I think for Cricket Victoria to initiate um, an award specifically for females is really significant as well and those can be the type of things that can encourage people 
to get involved or to stay involved um, in what was traditionally, you know, a very male dominated sport, even though Australia had played women's international cricket for years upon years. Um, yeah, I guess obviously not getting the publicity that they do now. It's, yeah, those stereotypes like we were talking about prior to this interview that, yeah, make a big difference in sport. Mm, yeah, definitely. And I guess we can touch on some of them in a moment, but has there been any other like significant milestones? I know you're injured now, but you had a very successful last year at the um, Vic Masters Athletic Champs. Yeah, um, it was my second season back into athletics after many years off due to injury and I guess just life in general um, and Shepherd and Athletics starting up was a significant reason why I got back involved in the sport because I no longer had to travel two hours to Bendigo to compete I literally live like five to ten minutes away from the Shepherd and Athletics track so I was very lucky um, a lot of hard training and dedication last season I set myself some goals and I surpassed those goals and achieved five gold medals at the Victorian State Masters Championships and also won gold at the Victorian Masters Rose Championships. Um, So, yeah, I was really looking forward to this season. Um, Unfortunately, it was playing cricket that I did my ACL on a Saturday night. And the Friday night I had thrown a club competition in Hammer Throw and, you know, like whilst I'm not going to the Olympics or Commonwealth Games, I certainly have aspirations of wanting to go to a World Masters Games. And I was 60 centimetres off my own club record, which got me like really enthusiastic about, oh, I shouldn't be throwing, you know, this far this time of the season. Like Mm. that'd be the distances I'd want to be throwing again at like State Masters. That was obviously like very significant. But in terms of other like significant milestones, um, Volunteer-wise, I established the Cricket Shepherd in um, Spirit of Cricket Award, and that's now presented annually to a person involved in a Cricket Shepherd and Club with a disability, whether it be intellectual or physical. Um, and it was a motion that I put to the executive about four or five seasons ago when I was on the Cricket Shepherd and Executive that there's so many awards on their awards night presented to the males, you know, like cricket of the year, under 23 cricketer of the year, like A to E grade, Mm -hmm. um, volunteer of the year type of awards, like umpire awards, but there was nothing to acknowledge somebody involved in a club with a disability. And yet the motion got passed and that award has been presented annually ever since. And I think that's really significant because uh, especially last season when, the young gentleman, uh, his name's Robbie, who won the award. His family was just over the moon that he got invited to a mainstream cricket award, that he was included in society and that, he, like, he had his photo up on this, um, the slideshow and his name was announced and he was given a trophy just like everybody else. Mm-hmm. Um, and, yeah, to see the difference that makes, as much as I... Uh, was really proud of myself and the efforts I put in for winning the medals at the Victorian Masters Championships. To have established a award like this, it actually means a lot more to me because I'm making a difference to somebody else's life. And, yeah, to do that, to be a voice for people who often don't have a voice, that means more to me than my own individual achievements. Mm Mm-hmm. And I think that is something so special and it's what really stood out when I, not that I stalked your Instagram, but when I was looking through and I was like, oh my gosh, like the stuff that you're doing to help out other members in your community is incredible. Like, yes, you are participating in sport yourself. So you're, you know, walking the walk, but you're also being able to like help people be included and make a difference and, you know, make everyone feel like part of society because we all are like, we're all human at the end of the day. So like, why not be involved in sport in the exact same presentation night? Like why, why couldn't that happen? Absolutely. And I think, you know, unfortunately society in general is just a very judgmental place at times and people often make judgments without understanding Mm -hmm. And I think that is something that happens a lot for people with disabilities. They are very misunderstood and that can be due to their inability to voice their opinions 
And so I think, you know, I have a voice. Why not use it and use it for something useful? Because these people with disabilities, they're humans. They're just like you and I. And some of the friendships I've made with them over the years and seen them grow and develop is absolutely amazing. And they are genuinely beautiful people who, yeah, are just misunderstood um, and are not given a go because of their disabilities and people don't understand how to include them. So I think just really taking the time to be an advocate, to be a voice for them and to see the difference it makes in their lives, to have them included in mainstream sporting clubs, it will always be more significant than anything I could ever achieve individually in my own athletics. Mm. And I, I, yeah, that goosebumps again. You've done it again. <laughs> like speaking of like the benefits that sport can have, is there like a particular one that's transferred over to other avenues of your life? So you've learned it in sport and it's transferred over. Oh, I think just the power of being resilient. Um, I was really thinking about these questions over the weekend <laughs> and sort of, uh, yeah, wrote down some answers and, and there's so many different takes, but I think, yeah, just the power of, of being resilient and never underestimating anything. Mm -hmm. um, so never underestimating the ability you have to make a change in society. And I go back to that sort of, you know, philosophy, philosophy of being just a, you know, a small town country girl, never thinking I'd achieve or be involved in the programs that I've been involved in, um, you know, from the, Cricket Australia National Inclusion Cricket Championships for people with a disability um, to Special Olympics National Games and travelling to New Zealand with um, Special Olympics Trans Tasman Games. Think, yeah, never underestimate what you can achieve. That flows over not just to sport but just to life in general, just to never underestimate anything and, yeah, never underestimate the power of being a volunteer and that can be volunteer in sport or in other areas of the community as well. For someone who is, I guess, in a small town in Australia, I'm assuming it's similar in other states, but would, would you give like specific advice to how, like how to get involved as a volunteer in, in terms of sport or other things? Like how, how would you help someone who would go, I want to do that too? Make a connection, whether it be like your local Rotary Club, for example, your local sporting club. It, you may want to uh, volunteer like at an arts and craft or like a gardening club. So just um, make a connection with somebody involved in that club and say to them that you're really keen to be a volunteer and even ask them, you know, hey, um, I've never really volunteered before. I really want to be involved. Like, would you mind mentoring me? Um, you know, show me the ropes, what I need to do. And I think that's a really important thing. If you have a role model that you can look up to and see what they're doing, that's a really good way to kickstart your volunteering journey. Yeah, that's great advice. And, you know, to be able to go, hey, like, I want to do this. I think the person that you've gone to will probably feel really enthusiastic, be like, great, I've got another minion. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Because it doesn't matter what part of society it is, everybody needs volunteers. Mm -hmm. um, you know, whether it's sport or other community clubs, everybody needs volunteers to make sport and to make those other social clubs run. So I'm sure, yeah, any club would be grateful to have someone knock on their door and say, hey, you know, I want to volunteer. What can I do? Yeah, that's good advice. I like it. Thank you for listening to this episode of Beyond Sport with Fiona Stewart. This is a completely independent podcast that has been created to share the journey and lessons of top level sporting professionals, but also your everyday lover of sport. If you liked this podcast, I'd really appreciate if you could leave a review and share it with someone who you think would also enjoy it. Until next time. <laughs>